inside the Milky Way and every other galaxy, there is a giant black hole at the center. And it's hard to explain where these came from. But even more peculiar is the fact that at, already at early times, there are billion solar mass black holes. That these weigh a billion times as much as the sun. Um, and this is at a redshift of six. Redshift tells you how much more dense the universe was at that time. And so you have to, in very rapid fire, do something f from forming these first, first protostellar objects, collapsing them probably to make... In, in, before my work, people thought you made relatively small stars. And how you're going to grow those up to making million and billion solar mass black holes is a, is a, is a puzzle. And so uh, one of the contributions we made was to say, hey, but we, we think that the first stars can be quite a bit larger. And then it would make sense for the large black holes to be able to form. We think that these, these black holes grow by accretion, but the accretion is in a disk. So it's a, it's a flat ring around the black hole. So the stuff is swirling around in the accretion disk, and it's moving pretty rapidly. And, in do, and before it falls into the black hole, it's giving off radiation. So what you're looking for is the radiation of this stuff that's falling into the black hole. And from studying that, um, in addition to what you're already saying about the motions of other things around the black hole, you can, in, you can infer that the black hole should be there. The galaxy as a, uh, galaxies, and in fact the universe as a whole, um, have the, uh, they're made of different pieces, and the atomic matter actually is only a very small portion. So um, the, the, the rest being the dark matter. In, in fact, um, this is, it's kind of, it's revolutionary over the past decade that this has become clear, that if you add up everything that we're familiar with on a daily basis, such as your body, the walls, the planets, all these things, all the atomic matter only adds up to 4% of the total content of the universe. And the, um, the other breakdown is in terms of dark matter and dark energy. And right now we're talking about the dark matter, which is the predominant bulk of the mass in the, in the galaxies and clusters and so on. So when people studied these first stars, they were aware that they form inside these big glo globes of dark matter. And at the center of this, of the dark matter, you have a protostellar cloud of hydrogen and helium that's, that starts to collapse. So our contribution was to say, well, but what about that huge bulk of material that's out there? Doesn't it play a role in, in this star formation process? Especially because these first stars are forming smack in the middle of these, of these, these spherical regions are called halos. So these halos of dark matter, um, especially near the centers, is where a lot, there's a huge amount of dark matter in there, and that's where your star's forming. So what we think happens is that the, the, there is a, a kind of dark matter power, basically. Um, the dark matter particles, and the, the, the ones that we believe, um, there's a lot of experiments going on right now to try to detect these particles, and I think that it's going to be resolved in the next five years, ten years at most. And the most likely candidate, they're, they're called WIMPs, which stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particles. And, so, and these WIMPs, whenever there's two of them that, fi that find each other, they interact among themselves, and they actually annihilate. So they lose their original identity and they, they turn into something else. But in that, annihila that annihilation process dumps a lot of heat into this protostellar material. So you've got this protostellar cloud that's trying to collapse to make a small star, but all of a sudden, boom, you're, you're, you're stopped because you have this heat source that stabilizes the cloud and prevents it from cl collapsing anymore. So you're, and it's actually really a star. The, 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 the nomenclature dark star could be a little misleading in the sense that people think, well, it's probably made of dark matter, but it really isn't. It's really made of hydrogen and helium, and just a smattering of dark matter is, it's, it's a very powerful heat source, and less than 1% of the mass is dark matter. And the annihilation process gives a heat source that powers the star, and it shines very bright objects. They really are stars. So they're, they're atomic objects that shine due to the dark matter power. 